So we were discussing the population analysis and said that if you have the PS, if you construct the PS and take all the basis functions over particular atoms, sum them and then subtract this from the charge of the atom, this becomes the, uh, the atomic charge, then it becomes the total effective charge on the atom A in the molecule. Okay, so, this becomes the total electrons and this is the atomic charge. So, that subtraction is the charge of the atom in the molecule. However, we said that we can since stress P s is equal to n and the interpretation was that that we have distributed these diagonal elements over different atoms, we could do some other population analysis like s to the power half P s to the power half which is also equal to n. So, we could write, so this is Mulliken, we could write the Lovedin as charges as the same Z A minus sum over mu in A S to the half P S to the half. And indeed it is possible to find many such population analysis because of the fact that I can construct trace of many such matrices which are invariant by splitting S, P, whatever, many, many ways we can do that. So that, uh, that is essentially the idea. However, the, this number which is summed over particular atom is not invariant. So we will get different charge density in different kind of partitioning scheme. So it is not really a fixed partition, it is arbitrary and uh, that is the reason we always say Mulliken population, Lovedin population, Hirschfeld populations, the different population analysis. We will restrict only to Mulliken and Lovedin. Of course, there are several other better population analysis. So, several other population analysis is there, but we will currently restrict only to Mulliken and Lovedin for this course. All right. So, let us go ahead and see how the density matrix, charge density bond order matrix can be used for certain other properties. So, one of the properties that we are interested is the dipole moment. So, dipole moment is a useful property. So, I hope all of you know what is dipole moment. It is actually a, an operator which has two parts. One is a nuclear contribution, one is electronic contribution. So, if you write the electronic part, the nuclear part is actually st st fixed, constant. So, I can always add this later. So, it is the electronic part is what we are really interested and this is basically minus E sum over I R I, where R I is the vector. So, that is my electronic part. So, if I take the expectation value of a Hartree-Fock wave function with respect to this operator, I will get what is called the electronic dipole moment, okay. And then I have to add to it the nuclear contribution to get the total dipole moment, which is just like the bond Oppenheimer, I add the total energy, I will add the nuclear. So, what is important is to eventually calculate with psi Hartree Fock mu psi Hartree Fock. So, let us keep mu as one operator. Of course, essentially mu is nothing but Ri. So, it is the sum of one electron operator, i equal to 1 to n for all the electrons. So, xi, yi, zi, it is a vector mu is also a vector operator. So, we have to find out the average value of these operators. So, how do you find out? We now use our rule, if you remember the average value rule for the one electron operator, just as we did for the Hamiltonian sum over h of i. So, we will exa we'll exactly use that and that result will be sum over, somebody should tell me now what is the result. Note that this is a sum of one particular operator. Okay. So, you can if you if you if you if you want you can write this as sum over i sum mu i just to make it comfortable for you or you can say minus e and r i. So, what will be the operator here? Uh, what will be the expression here? 
Yeah, Samovar I, Kai I, Miu I. Miu I is nothing but Ri basically. It is nothing but Ri X multiplied with the electronic charge with the negative sign. Okay. So, so this is what the dipole moment operator, dipole moment operator is. This is a one electron operator. So, once again I sum this one expectation value of this one electron operator over every spin orbital and sum. Okay, so, calculate over every spin orbital and sum. Just like I did, did for the one electron part of the Hamiltonian. So, it is the same rule. Okay, the rule is exactly same. So, this then for the closed shell system, I can do spin integration. So, when chi i has phi i alpha and phi i beta, I can do spin integration. So, what is the result? i equal to 1 to n by 2, 2 times, yes, phi i, mu i, phi i, right? No, it is a, it is an average value, no? Just like I did Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian is sum over h of i. So, how did I do it? Chi i, h chi i, so it is exactly same. I mean, I'm just writing mu i. You can say just mu. I mean, it doesn't mu. But you have to understand what is mu. I have written mu as sum over mu i. So that is the reason I wrote mu i. Nothing else. But basically, if you construct mu as just e of r, okay. So r i is basically not important. What is important is the coordinate. So if this is one, this is one, then this should be one. So in a simple way to understand. So r one. So that's my quad, that's a dummy quad, dummy variable. So your mi i, mi i is just r, r1, but it has x, y and z component, okay. So basically it will become 2 times sum over phi i. So you have x, so you have minus e, let us say 2 times minus e into 2 times phi i x phi i for the x component. Okay, in the, so in a vector sense, I can say that uh, mu x equal to mu y equal to similarly minus 2 times e sum over i phi i y phi i and so on. You can write mu z and so on. So these are vector quantities. So each x, y, z you can write in this manner. Okay. So unlike your h, that is only different, this is a vector quantity. So I have to I have to write for x, y, and z. For each x, y, z, I have to I can write a separate functions. So dipole moment is a vector quantity. So I have mu x, mu y, mu z. So whichever direction you want to calculate, you can calculate, and then you can take the overall dipole moment as an average. Mu x square, mu y square plus mu z square square root. So that's an average dipole moment. So I can calculate this uh, as an overall. So the point is that calculation of dipole moment is uh, fairly straightforward, but I also need to write this out in terms of my atomic orbital because my entire expression I want to do for Hartree-Fock without molecular orbitals. So I can do the same thing here. So let us start with 2 times sum over i phi i mu phi i. So mu is now a one particle operator. Mu is just a one particle operator. So if this is one, this is one, this is one. So it's just E R I. So mu is not the total operator, but just the one particle operator. So how do I expand this now? So I do the same expansion. For phi i star, I bring in C mu y. So mu C mu y star C nu i, then uh, A mu mu a mu. Yes. Mu mu sum over i. Chi i is not summation, psi is sum over i. Psi is a product, is anti-symmetric product. So when you are writing phi you one No, no, the total operator. All, all the yeah, yeah. That is why this sum has come. No, no, I think you are going back to the Slater rule. If you remember the Slater rule, we said Hamiltonian is sum over h of i plus sum o 1 by r i j. So when I took this part, let us say I call it h naught, okay. 
what was the result? It was sum over i chi i h chi i. Right? So it's just that. I mean, I'm not doing anything new. So it's just that it is a vector quantity. So these are these are all vector quantity now. That is the only thing. These are all vector quantity. So I have to have x, y, and z. Other than that, I'm I'm just applying this. Okay. So I'm again repeating that there is a sum over electron that need not come. Sum over spin orbitals takes care of that. Rest of them by orthogonality all become zero. You may say that n times this should come because here there are n factorial, but all that te is taken care of because there is a 1 by n square root n factorial in psi. Please understand when psi I expand psi, I have n factorial here, n factorial here, you have n terms here. I have not proved it. So, when you do this, there is a n factorial terms here, there is a n factorial terms here, there is a n terms here. However, a, a term here with an off diagonal term here would become 0. So, only there are actually not n factorial square, there are only actually n factorial terms, okay. And there are n terms here. So, how many terms are there? If you have number counting, there is a problem n factorial into n. Here I have only n terms. That n factorial is being cancelled because of the 1 by square root n factorial on either side. That is all. The number count is very easy, okay. So, your total number of surviving terms are n factorial into n, which then eventually cancels 1 by square root n factorial gives you this term and the terms are grouped such that this, these are the n groups. So, out of these n factorial n terms, one set of n factorial is same, another set of n factorial is same, another set of n factorial is same. So, when I cancel this 1 by n factorial, these n non-equivalent terms come. They are non-equivalent because the spin orbitals are different, yeah, because the spin orbitals are different. So, there is a simple logic, I have not proved it, but it can be proved very easily. So, these are of course non-equivalent as chi i's are changing. So, only those sets of n terms are there, but total number count is matching. So, there will be no further summation, okay. So, when I do this, now you can, re you can realize that I have 2 times sum over i. So, this becomes my charge density bond order matrix. So, I can write this as sum over mu nu, p nu mu times a mu dipole operator, one electron dipole operator, okay. So, many times just to avoid this symbol, we can write this as a d as a dipole operator, uh, just to avoid this recurrence of mu and nu, but does not matter. So, so you can now write this as a trace of, you can quite easily see, you have a sum over mu which is summed up. Okay, so let us write this as a dipole operator. So let me call this uh, set of terms a mu, sorry, mu a nu. This is one electron operator. Again, I remember this one electron term. Okay, let me call this d mu nu as a matrix element of dipole operator. So then this can be written as sum over mu nu p nu mu d mu nu. which is nothing but trace of P D. When I multiply P D, one summation is done and this other summation of a new ensures that it is a trace, okay. So, it is trace of P D. So, all you need to do is to calculate the dipole matrix element, one electron operator again, X i, again this is a vector quantity. So, X i, Y i, Z i between the basis sets, call this some dipole matrix. So, I will have 3 sets of dipole matrix, 1 for x, 1 for y, 1 for z, okay. And then take this trace of the 3 sets of quantities, I will get mu, overall mu for x, y and z depending on what you use, dx, dy, dz. So, just a vectorial uh, quantity, yes, same, same because I have used the same, I have used the same definition. 2 sum over i, c mu i star, c nu i have called p nu. So, it is same. I mean, as long, I mean, I could have still called it p mu nu and, and 
as long as I, as, I, as long as I multiply right quantities. So then I have to, I have to change my multiplication rules, that is all. Okay. So this is to be consistent with the matrix multiplication rules. All right. So, so all you need to do is to calculate this x i, y i, z i, x y, basically not x i, x y z. What is x i? There is nothing called x i. It is x y z because i is dummy. Electron coordinate is dummy. So all you need is to calculate the integral of x y z. Integrals of x y z over the basis for dipole moment. And that those integrals are stored in D, D matrix. D is a vector, D is, D, sorry, D is a vector quantity, vector matrix. So you have Dx, three matrices Dx, Dy, Dz. Okay. So you calculate the integrals of x, y, z over the basis calc and store them Dx, Dy, Dz. You use this as a trace of Pdx, Pdy, Pdz to get mu x, mu y, mu z. Mu z. So that is your electronic contribution and then of course you have to add to it the nuclear contribution. So nuclear contribution is also a vector quantity. So you have RA, capital RA. So you have to do the ZA into capital RA. So again RA has XA, YA, ZA. So add the nuclear contribution in XYZ. So you get the total dipole moment in XYZ. Is it clear? So the strategy is very simple. So the everything that I have. I can, I am just reducing spin integration and then in terms of the orbital, space or these uh, the basis orbitals, yes. Yeah, so if I have, this is a vector quantity, right? So your mu is a vector operator, it has xyz, mu is nothing but xyz, okay, ri vector is nothing but xyz. So it is a one electron operator of xyz. So I compute x integral over a mu a nu, y int no, you do not have to do plus. You can do separately and then later on also you can sum. It does not matter. You can write it as a vector quantity, but basically you have to do x, y, z integrals. Okay. You can, so that is that is your problem. How will you write it? So once I am mu a, mu, I can always write mu equal to mu x i, okay, plus mu, mu y j. That is your, that is a separate point. But what is required is basically to calculate the integrals of x, y, z. That is the new thing that is required which I have not done in Hartree-Fock. Remember when I did Hartree-Fock, I had integrals over half Laplacian, I had integral over 1 by R for atoms, 1 by uh, Ri, sum over Ri, R minus Ri for molecules, whatever. So H of I and 2 electron integrals, 1 by R12. But this is a new integral that you have to calculate, R, which is XYZ. So that is what I am saying, that calculate the integrals over XYZ, call them DX, DY, DZ matrix and simply take a trace of this. So that becomes a very simple idea. Again, you do not need molecular orbitals. I can write everything in terms of atomic orbitals. Yes, any question? No, we are not, we are not worried about nuclear spin here. No, no, no. There is no, in fact, this nuclear is just a positive charge, positive, fixed positive charge. Okay, we are not, in fact, we are not even taking, there is a coupling between spin and or nuclear. Those things are not taken. So those are all relativistic regime. In fact, that coupling is also comes under relativistic regime. Here it is very simple, they are point charges, fixed point charges. Okay. So just as, this is a classical dipole moment. So the nuclear part is just classically calculated and added to the electronic dipole moment. Electronic part has to be quantum. So that is important because, yeah, electrons are not fixed particles. And that is the first thing that we have ditched, right, the, 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 the electrons are particles stationed at one point. Okay, so that's so that is all we are discussing. All right. 